Well, as you might have heard, there's been a couple of primaries that have taken place tonight across multiple states, and I really had no intention of doing a video on this tonight. My expectations were to the floor, and I really only do videos about elections if there's good news, if there's cause for celebration. But the following day, I was planning to do a breakdown as to why the night didn't go as we had hoped for, because that's just what I've become accustomed to doing on this channel. I've been doing it for a very long time. Uh, but I've got to say... The night did not go the way that I expected. In fact, this is probably actually the best night the left has ever had since I've been covering politics here on YouTube. I mean, centrists went down in flames across the country. Progressives had blowouts, uh, won in unexpected races, won in expected races, but still I had my doubts because this is America and whatever can go wrong usually does go wrong. So even in these races, like the Pennsylvania Democratic Party primary, you know, John Fetterman was pulling far ahead, but I still thought, I just, I'll believe it when I see it, right? Who knows what can go wrong? Uh, but in this instance, a lot of things went right, and we even saw some unexpected things happen on the GOP side, where more fire-breathing, psychotic Republicans who were endorsed by Donald Trump, not doing too hot. So we're going to break it down. I'm honestly a little bit, like, struck, uh, taken aback by the results tonight, because, again, I was anticipating bad news. I had braced for bad news. But what I'm getting is the opposite. And genuinely, I don't know how to process it because in, a, in the United States of America, especially if you're a leftist, this usually doesn't happen. So let's talk about the Republicans first. So Madison Cawthorn has lost his primary. It is official. Insurrectionist Madison Cawthorn will be a one-term congressman. He was defeated by Chuck Edwards. Now, Chuck Edwards is someone who... He's a Republican, so if you're watching this program and you watch this program regularly, you're not going to agree with him, but he seems like a more rank-and-file establishment Republican, like he has his faux populism thing going on, but he doesn't seem as, like, I don't know, insane as Madison Cawthorn. So, to not have Madison Cawthorn in Congress is really great, because Madison Cawthorn is psychotic and if we have one more republican who's seemingly going to blend in with the rest of them and we don't have this individual who's kind of getting a lot of uh headlines and shifting the country to the right i think that's genuinely a good thing but i've got to say you know ever since madison cawthorn said that there are members of congress who uh like to partake in uh parties involving you know white substances maybe flour um and on top of that uh, he he said that they like to attend sex parties. They've had it out for him. There's been a slow drip of scandals about Madison Cawthorn. And I mean, these are scandals that essentially lead me to believe that he's a closeted homosexual, even though he's publicly anti-gay. I mean, some of the things are very bizarre. There's a video that they leaked of him naked with, uh, I'm not sure if this was confirmed, but his cousin in a bed and he was humping his cousin's face. Look, all of these scandals don't really matter much to me. Uh, what he does in Congress is by far much more damaging, but the GOP had it out for him, which leads me to believe that, you know, the uh, white substance sex parties are a real thing. And now that he lost, I hope that he names names. But there's that. So getting to the uh, Republican primary in the state of Pennsylvania, you had David McCormick, Dr. Oz, and Kathy Barnett. And currently, you know, we're not going to know the results, but Dr. Oz and David McCormick are in a dead heat, and Kathy Barnett is coming in a distant third place. And I've got no love for Dr. Oz and uh, David McCormick, but Kathy Barnett was, I think, the worst in this race because she was so extreme. She marched with the Proud Boys, you know, at the Capitol on January 6th, 2021. But whereas you have someone like Dr. Oz endorsed by Donald Trump, Struggling currently, Madison Cawthorn also endorsed by Donald Trump, so that's something to keep in mind if his influence is waning. Um, and, and honestly, in this race, I'm not rooting for any of them, but David McCormick is probably it, it, like the preferable one because I think he's the most boring who could lose uh, easier against John Fetterman because John Fetterman, and I've kind of spoiled the next result, but I'm sure you've heard, heard of it by now. You know, John Fetterman, I want someone who he can beat. And Dr. Oz has name recognition. He's a celebrity and he's embarrassed himself. You know, he's flip-flopped on a number of issues. He released that embarrassing gun ad where he pretended to care about guns. So, you know, 
I want David McCormick to be the one that John Fetterman faces. And we're not sure how this is going to turn out. But, I mean, in terms of a GOP primary, I usually don't care. But if the least crazy one wins, then that's when I'm, I'm happy. But let's get to what we all care about. The results on the Democratic Party primary side. And, of course, John Fetterman, it wasn't even close. I mean, this is what polling indicated. But he absolutely destroyed the centrist, Connor Lamb, whose mansion's mini-me, in a landslide. 59 to 26 percent. Let me repeat those numbers. 59 to 26 percent. Now, I went into this thinking, okay, a couple of days ago, John Fetterman had a stroke, I believe. He had a medical issue, and I thought that that could change things. And even before that happened, you know, seeing this lead, I've, I've been around long enough to see giant leads evaporate. Nina Turner in 2021, Bernie Sanders in 2020. So I thought, not going to get my hopes up. But I, I mean, in this instance, what we expected to happen if you follow the polls, did happen. John Fetterman absolutely crushed Connor Lamb, who is a corporate Democrat, who's terrible, who's essentially a Republican. Like, he should be competing in the Republican primary, but he's in the Democratic Party primary. And, you know, he said that uh, if you want a socialist, if you want someone who's going to be attacked by Republicans, then vote for John Fetterman. Turns out that's exactly what people want in the state of Pennsylvania. So, uh, kick rocks, eat shit. Hope to never see you again, Connor Lamb. Fuck you. Now, when it comes to the state of Kentucky, this is something that I'm very excited about. So, a couple of years ago, Mitch McConnell, he was uh, up for re-election. And there was a Democratic Party primary between Amy McGrath and Charles Booker. Now, the Democratic Party establishment came out for Amy McGrath. And everyone said she's going to lose because she's offering voters nothing. And she did indeed lose. We all wanted Charles Booker because even if it would be an uphill battle, even if it would be very difficult for Charles Booker to win in a deep red state like Kentucky, he at least has a grassroots movement behind him. He at least is offering voters something. Therefore, he has a better chance. Well, turns out he defeated multiple opponents in a Democratic Party primary in a landslide. So he will be facing off against Rand Paul this November. And, you know, look, this is going to be a tough battle. But if anyone's going to face off against Rand Paul, who I'm confident in, it's Charles Booker. This is going to be tough, and we're all going to have to do our part to help him. Phone banking, canvassing, donations. Uh, but the fact that he won this, and he actually has the chance now, I think this is really exciting. Now, for this next race, I, I did not expect this to happen, and it came very, very, very close by a couple of hundred votes, but somebody very progressive won her Democratic Party primary. I'm, of course, talking about Summer Lee, who defeated Steve Irwin by just a couple of hundred votes. I'll take it. This is someone who believes in Medicare for All, student debt cancellation. Her politics are in line with the squad. She's more in line with viewers of this channel, so she actually is a real progressive. She, run this, uh, she ran this campaign with zero corporate money. She ran this campaign as a staunch progressive, and it paid off. And she is going to be a firebrand in Congress. And I am really, really excited to see her uh, if she gets elected. She still has to face off in a general election. But um, just to have her win this primary is really, really exciting. Now, uh, last but certainly not least, in my state of Oregon, there's been a corporate Democrat dickhead who's essentially a conservative Republican named Kurt Schrader. And at the time that I record this, he is getting demolished. With 40% of precincts reporting, Kurt Schrader is losing to Jamie McLeod Skinner. And I've got to say, if he were to lose this, and check the comment section because I'll be providing you with updates if there are any, uh, then I cannot tell you how happy I will be because of how mad he will be. This is an establishment Democrat who is essentially a Joe Manchin light, if you will, and He's a sellout. He's been bought and paid for by special interests. So to have him be defeated by somebody who had not nearly as much money as, as him, you just, you love to see it. And I, I think, honestly, the tweet of the night is going to go to Ken Klippenstein, who says, centrist Dems eating a lot of shit today. Yeah. So uh, I don't know why this is the case, why centrist Democrats are all of a sudden performing so poorly, but I can't help but think that part of this is due to the way that they responded to the repeal of Roe v. Wade, how they haven't really been doing enough. I'm not necessarily sure, and we'll have to really wait and see what the exit polls say, do a deeper dive, right? But either way, this might have been the one thing that restored the spark. This might get me out of this doomer attitude that I've been feeling since Nina Turner lost. And to be clear, it goes before it goes back further than Nina Turner losing. But, you know, it's been very difficult to stay optimistic and be hopeful at all when there's just 
you know, um, loss after loss after loss. You know, we're down, we get kicked some more. Get kicked even more. Kicked in the teeth. It, it just felt like we were never going to get a break. But at least when it comes to Democratic Party primaries, maybe the Democratic Party base is waking up to the fact that the Democratic Party needs to change. This is what we've been saying on this show for years. So, look, I, I don't even know how to process this information. I'm still in a little bit of disbelief. But what I want to do is leave you with Summer Lee's concession speech because um, the energy is there and I absolutely love it. So, enjoy. We got a lot of work to do.